My name is Kate Greer, and I'm a graduate student at The Ohio State University. I am here to discuss a recent letter with Bradley Peterson and our other collaborators entitled, A Reverberation Lag for the High Ionization Component of the Broadline Region in the Narrowline Seifert 1 Mercurian 335. In this coffee brief, I will address some of the main points of this letter. Narrowline Seifert 1 galaxies are a subset of active galactic nuclei, or AGNs, that display narrower broad emission line components than typical type 1 AGNs. Many are reported to show significant blue enhancement in some of their high ionization lines, such as carbon-4 at 1549 angstroms or helium-2 at 1640 angstroms. This may be a signature of outflowing material. If this is the case, the use of these high ionization lines to compute virial black hole masses may be problematic, as this method relies upon the assumption that the emitting gas is in virial motion around the black hole. Many recent studies have attempted to investigate this through the reverberation mapping of the helium-2-4686 angstrom emission line. However, the expected time lags for the helium-2 emission line in many of these objects are extremely short, and therefore require extremely high sample data. Until now, no studies have successfully recovered a robust helium-2 lag in a narrowline Seifert-1 galaxy. One of our goals for our 2010 reverberation mapping campaign was to obtain the helium-2 lag measurements for the narrowline Seifert-1 galaxy Markarian-335. During this campaign, we obtained high sampling rate data, both spectra and photometry, over a 130-day span in the fall of 2010. We obtained these data at several different observatories. Figure 2 in our letter shows the continuum and emission line light curves from Markarian-335. This plot shows the average continuum flux and integrated emission line fluxes as a function of time. To guide the eye, we've placed vertical dashed lines at clear features that are present in all three light curves. We measure a time lag of 2.7 plus or minus 0.6 days in the helium-2 emission line, and a time lag of 13.9 plus or minus 0.9 days for the H-beta emission line. This is the first robust lag measurement of the helium-2 emission line in a narrow line Seifert-1 galaxy. The resulting black hole mass computed from the helium-2 emission line is in excellent agreement with that computed using the H-beta emission line. This suggests that the two emission lines arise from different parts of the same structure. Figure 1 in our letter shows the flux calibrated mean and root mean square spectra of Markarian-335 from the spectra obtained at MDM. The RMS spectrum in the bottom panel shows the broad helium-2 variations. To search for bulk outflow signatures, we cross-correlated the red and blue wings of the broad helium-2 emission line. We do not detect any lag, which argues for the realized motion of the broadline region gas rather than bulk outflow. If you'd like more details on this study, please take a look at our letter, which was posted on AstroPH today. Further results from our 2010 reverberation campaign will be coming soon, so please stay tuned.